Well, let's just say I'm not having a very good day. So, I was doing rewaxing of one of my barrels, my quad barrel, and I dropped the blaster on the floor. It dropped. It snapped this completely. Okay, vertebrae 18.5. Yeah, but the thing is, this is serviceable. Now, I didn't have really good, and I have this on manual focus at the moment, okay, I never had really good, um, you know, I never had really good, um, uh, current disassembly videos for this. Why? Because I barely ever disassemble these. I barely ever have to anymore. But I have a broken plunger rod, so I just, I'm going to have to redo this. This is all glued here. I had to cut it. This was glued here. Cut As you can see, this is like go-to glue. And what it does, keeps the tube from moving. But it's a good thing, too, because that spring is 2017. It's old. I needed to put in a new spring. I'll be perfectly honest to say that. I needed to put in a new spring. I haven't done it yet. I'm still adjusting a tripod. Here we go. I do work off my bed, as I always do. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to have to remove this. Now, here's the thing. These are fiberglass. And you can see it's already it's already bent here. And what it does is this it bends it and then you'll do it. So, here's why a cheetah can't do what this does. Now, this is a good way of explaining it. You have to see it. I've explained it a million times. It has a bolt that takes this really long screw and compresses it down to this. And you can't just close the shell and put it in. I tell them, tell them, tell them. You can't just cut it down and get the same yield because you don't have the same pre-compression. Okay, I tell them. But nobody gets it. So here we go. Here we go. This is really cool. If a cheetah could do this, where it can bend the front, you can put in just this and then put in the front, that will work. And, and putting this together and taking it apart is kind of weird. However, this is this is the highest velocity standard size pistol anywhere. Uh, spring power anywhere. And the reason is, it's a spring. So let me, uh, let's go take this apart, shall we? And this is, this is going to be one of those videos. It's going to be a shop video. It's not going to be like a really high quality video, but I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so here we are. you got to get this side apart and this side apart. And then you have to pull the whole thing. Now, I have a feeling this might does associate from the tube, and if it does, I'll fix it. Oh, oh. Hold on. Got something stuck here. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Um... Now, because the back handle's not on here, the whole thing is going to come out. That's actually a good thing. Okay, come on. Oh, God. Come on. This is like a... Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's get rid of all the stick points. There we go. There we are. Now, normally, this rod would stay in one place. Okay, but it doesn't because of the back side. There we are. Wow. This, is, this rod has been on here since I reshelled it in 2018. That catch is still incredibly, incredibly sharp. Let me focus this a bit. If I can. Wow. And as you can see, whoa, look at that catch. Still very strong. There's my spring. This is an original 18.5 tough. Original big red 18.5. And as you can see, pieces of it have come off, all that stuff. And there's the plunger rod itself. You can see how that holds right into the, the back here and everything else. Well, this gives me a chance to retool this whole blaster. Put in a spring that's more powerful. And you can see little black spots where he tried to work with a primer and then put it on here. Yeah. But you see how I ground the ends? That's me. I do that by hand. Okay? And I can actually, this is a good opportunity to fix up this whole thing and get it tuned up because I wasn't going to take this apart because it was shooting so well and accurately. I mean, even the turret, I never got a turret. Remember the last video where I was shooting with the turret and I shot that ball, I got it first shot? Turret never could do that. It just couldn't do that consistently. And I've gotten this to shoot so nice, but the nice thing about this is that I can actually now change this whole thing out. Now this gets compressed to four inch spring spacing and now here it is. It dropped off the ground, and what happened was, because the scope's on here, it's so heavy, it went like that. Now, scope is still fine. Everything's still fine. The blaster actually held the drop really well. Uh, it's fiberglass. It didn't break. Jesus Christ, though, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see here. Where's my torx driver? This is a torx driver. Here's what I wanted to show you. So, we got a spring in here. 
whole thing's in here. Watch this, man. Watch this shit. You can actually just... Well, I might not be able to by hand. Hold on. Ugh. So the, the plunger can move forward and backward. See that? And the screw goes all the way back here. Oh, good. I'm not going to have to shape this. I didn't shape this to begin with. Look how long this has... And the catch is still good. The catch looks great. I can't believe how well this held up. But it's also because it's got a number 10 Torx in it. So let me take off the head. Boom, 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 boom. This gives me a chance to redo the whole thing. It really, it really is a good opportunity. I'm not going to be warring for a while. There it is. So there is a number 10 Torx on this. This actually funnels directly into that. There's my tube. Yes, it's old. Um, yes, I redid this in 2018. Use this tube. But boy, it is it is held up extremely well. And now I am I really do think. And the sealant, the sealant's good. The sealant's fine. But this thing has really, really, really ran its course. And I can go in and I can redo this whole thing. Okay, but that's the thing. This this sits in here, as so. Okay, and then what happens is you have this open, and you put you put the spring in like this. I'm not gonna do it now because I got more stuff I have to do to this thing. Because this isn't actually an opportunity. So sometimes when catastrophe happens, it's an opportunity. And what happens is you screw this down while this is in here, and you can compress the spring all the way down. So normally this spring would sit all the way out here. Actually, this is taking quite a set, so it'll probably go farther. And this gives me an opportunity to change this spring. So now this spring that sits from about right here goes all the way down to like back here, and you have all that pre-comp. A, a cheetah can't do that. And maybe it can if you try to squish it in. Maybe it can if it does that. But it just doesn't have that feature. The blaster's meant so that the sides fold out like this. Wow, this blaster still it looks in incredibly good condition. And if you look real carefully, you can see the fiberglass the inside of here. Look at that fiberglass weave. That is actual cloth resin, um, and, it, and, and that's what it does. It absorbs it. It also keeps this from pulling apart. So the shell is just incredible condition still. I cannot believe this. I, okay, I was afraid the catch was bad, or the catch plate was bad. Let's see if we can get a focus on this. Let me see. Ah, okay. No. Dude, holy cow. That looks really good. I know, I can't really see without... I can't really see the focus that well or anything, but wow, that looks really good. I, I should have painted this dark. I may do that this time. Um, but the only things I have to change are pretty much the rod, the catch, but I have to re-glue and recenter everything. I'm also going to re-leak test, and I may re-glue the go-to glue in here. That's that seal that's in the front. Okay. That's that seal that's in the front. You know, autofocus is just too unspecific. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So here's the plunger. I put this in macro mode so you can see it. So here's the plunger. Here's the end of the plunger right here. So this is fitted, molded by firing it to the back of this perfectly. So actually, you see where the dart ends right here? That's where the dart sits, right back there into the brass coupler. Okay, so this fucker goes into here, goes into there, goes like so. Yeah. Now this one, I'm not changing to a couple. Now these scratches are all on the outside. There's a lot of outside scratches, but the inside of this is perfectly smooth, no scratches. However, the outside of it's been banged up quite a bit. This, this, this has been used the last three years. It's had active use in wars and everything. This is just such an amazing blaster. Um, and, it, and, and all I have to do really is, is replace the rod. And while I have it, I can, I, can, I can do some work on the seals, the springs. I can tune it up a bit because before I wasn't going to take it apart because this thing was hitting that ball way up there, hitting it with the turret from like across the room. And, and you couldn't do that with the turret. You could do that with a single barrel, but not the turret. And then when I put a scope on it, the thing was just incredibly accurate. But, um, but yeah, that's the thing. So this is what I mean by it screws down. Oh, well, our pillager head screws down. No, you screw it on. I'm talking screw down. <laughs> it, people don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking. You know, it, it's like I try my best. I'm not the most technical speaker in the world. But I am the best, one of the best modders. 
when it comes to pistols. Possibly the best modder when it comes to pistols. I'm gonna get to work on this. I just wanted to see how this is apart. Yes, it's a disaster that this fell and broke, but fortunately, I can reshell it. I got lots of shells. I can just take this off, put it on there, throw it in there. But while I'm doing it, I want to spend a few weeks on this. Okay, so here's what I did. So I took out this right here. And it was a little flexible, and I was getting actually some air leakage through here. So what I did is I took this out, and I crazy glued the inside of this, okay? But while it was semi-dry, what I did is I put the whole assembly back together in here. Well, this is what I call hand-fitting. So when I do measurements, a lot of times I don't do a measurement. What I do is I will match it to whatever I'm working with. So right now I did this to make sure the barrel lines up, the coupler lines up, everything's up. And I put these two front bolts back and this one bolt here back. That way that this whole thing without the plunger can be stationary and this can be cool. This also what this does, let me see where my other barrel is, hold on. Um, another modding mishap, I lost the front of this. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a new barrel anyway. And uh, yeah. So this makes sure that it's straight and it's true. And I sight it and it's straight and it's true. Uh-huh. And everything is good. And so so yeah, now that was a cool looking pistol. It's not cool. I might be making a smaller two version of this and throwing this barrel on here, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'll use this for my star shot. Not star shot, sorry, King Crush. But what I'm doing right now, and this is laminated, so this stays in place like so. And then I'm making sure, it, what this does, it just makes sure that this, re glued to this, because this is a long shot plunger head. And then I, I glued it to the, um, to the, um, to the um, silicone on the inside. Well, I had a little break, a little shelf when I pulled it apart. So I'm like, oh great, I can use that to press against it, put in some crazy glue in between that and that, now give me a temporary set to fill this whole groove in between here and here so that it's perfectly lined. Now why am I turning it like this? Because what I'm doing is I'm evening out the glue in here as it's going. So then after this, this dries, I'm going to tear this apart, I'm going to put in more crazy glue on the top of this, and I make this so this is like totally solid, totally airtight. A lot of people when they do, uh, let's say, snap pulls, for example, or rainbow pistols, what they do is they use four screws or three screws or two screws here. There's just two things wrong. One, usually it, you end up with cracking the tube because either the force of it um, will break it or what have you. The other thing is that um, sometimes you get some air leakage. The really good people know how to make fucking rainbow pistols and snaps. They don't do that. They know what they're doing, you know. But this, what this does is, you see this part of the shell here, that's fiberglass up here and up here, and this is the shell. So my job of holding it is not a screw. What it is is it's this shell right here. And it keeps the whole front from pushing forward. Okay, on top of that, that this limited to back here as well. Which I can really use to clean this up too. Yeah, this is actually an opportunity is what this is. This blaster was already shooting, um, you know, 175 three shots turreted. About two, a set of 279 turreted, around 310 single, not this barrel, but a, a longer barrel. You know, the one before the mishap I had. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to make another barrel for that. That's no big deal. Okay. And uh, what it does, you know, 314 is the limit for this thing. And this thing is bad. And that was with this leak. So imagine without this leak, fuck man. Yeah, you got it. In other words, it probably pressed against here when it fired, but it still was a leak. And, you know, it still, it still wasn't steady, and this is still moving. The other thing this is will do, because this gets glued here and here, is it will make it so this is all solid. You don't have the, I won't have as much harmonics. Or if I do, it will be much more controlled. And notice the glue I used to hold the tube here is actually, no, this does hold together without the glue. I can't assemble it and fire without the glue. I did it for years. What it does though, is it tightens my groupings. It turns, you know, it turns 10 inches at 200 feet into like five inches, six inches at 200 feet. Okay, it really, it really tightens them up. Um, the other one, the Bird of, the, the, the bird of Prey AR, is, it's just, it, it's so tight. I say it's about five inches at 200. It, I've seen them as, I've seen them as high as three and usually the five is, is more vertical. So, I mean, really tight groupings. And the reason is, is this is a very precise coupler, very solid, and this is in here. But on the AR, 
the coupler is actually laminated epoxy and then that goes into a one half inch one half inch which goes into a 916 around it and a little uh, 732 ribbon around that so what you do is you have a coupler not just on the outside of it but you have it on the inside and that's why I put a slide breach on I took apart that 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 916 and I redid it so the 916 is now a longer one that has a little load thing here so I can pull it out load it pull it bam and those groupings I haven't scientifically tested them oh boy but let's just say I had good days and bad days with that blaster the bad days I would get about a foot grouping at, at 12 at 200 feet and the good days I get about three inches well, I'm getting more three inches days with that, and, and, and I can tell why. And it's because this doesn't break apart. Now it's held by a longer piece of brass, and it's in there. On top of that, I'm putting another piece of brass all around here. Maybe a piece of aluminum or steel, I don't know. But for right now, people wonder, how similar is this to a snap pull? Well, I based it off of some of the, some of the, the, the projects, the prospects and mistakes of snap pulls. One of the mistakes is that I felt that the forward should be governed by a screw. It should be governed by the shell that has a little recess there. See that? Uh-huh. See that? Let me get you a little more light. Yeah. So what happens is this part, that's a long shot pump. And the long shot pump gets, gets, gets put right here. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. This is, this is how you make sure it's even. Also, when you file crowns, file, turn, file, turn, file, turn, file, turn, file, turn, file, turn. The whole filing down, file, turn, file, turn. Yeah, that's how, how do I get those nice crowns, nice level and even, and then I hit it with a deburr tool? That's how I do it. That's how I do it. So if you do things rotationally and fitting, that's what it is. And this is why my modding style is a lot different than most people. Because it is hand fitting. Like, um, oh, I'm, how do I make sure that this stays center in here? I'm going to hold it there? No, I'm going to put it in the blaster. I'm going to center it while the glue is drying. Then I'm going to take it out put in another layer of glue once the position is tacked on and set. That way my parts are really accurate. This is how I get that kind of accuracy. Is that a lot of work? Yeah, I'm still sitting here turning this. I'm going to probably be working on this one part probably all night. Uh huh. All night. I like the uh, the seal in here. I like that. Oh, where did it go? I like that this plunger molded perfectly to the inside of it, so it hits perfectly. I'm gonna try to find the reference point where it was at, although that might be impossible to see. And I'm gonna try to line it up to there. And but, dude, isn't this great? And this is all glued, all one piece. It just slams on there. And from here, you can adjust your spring forward and back depending on what you want, and that would have this go shorter and longer. Yeah, but unfortunately the whole thing fell, landed on this, and it, and it broke. It, it did, but like I said, it is actually, and I could, I could actually just screw, I could have screwed that in and put that in, but I'm like, nah, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Look at that catch. I can't believe that. I have used, I have must have fired at least 12,000 shots out of this plunger. You know, you can see the little bend you often get from this. You can see the, the limit mark that defines this. Oh, i got to turn it some more. The little limit mark that defines this right here that defines how far back it goes when it's in the plunger. So it's in the catch right on here. So my catch is around here, as you can see. Okay, actually, it's, like, it's, at, it's right here. See that? Yeah. So then this whole thing is boom. And it's just, that's why this is world fastest, one of the world fastest pistols. I'm not going to claim world fastest, world fastest, but, you know, single drawn, standard length pistol. There might be somebody who has a faster, you know, pistol that's single load. There might be somebody who has a rainbow out there. I'm not sure, but I do know this. It's not just the speed, it's the accuracy. You know, you can go 5 or 3 per second all you want, but if, if your dart is just all over the place, it's not really cool. This, this blaster, you've seen videos where this thing just murderizes it's just absolutely great all right so let's see here this is dry a bit i have this tacked in now i'm gonna take this this is what i mean by this is held in and it's kind of like wings okay fat screwdriver here and i also want to make sure the glue doesn't doesn't bond my my shell can always repaint this no big deal okay there we go that was i felt that that was bonding a little but that took it off before. It was completely dry. Boom, boom. It's pretty much tacked in place. Okay, so now I gotta pull this. Up. Now this is why these are fiberglass. So you actually, when you take this blaster apart and service it, you never take this back part apart. 
Usually never. Only only time you ever take it apart is a plunge is a plunger rod replacement. That's pretty much it. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just drop this out of here. Ugh, if I can. Let's see. Come on, come on, get out. Out, out, out. Out. Ah. Mm. There we go. There we are. There we are. Get out. Get out. 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 There we go. Ah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Put this back down here. I'll tack this all back here. This keeps this back part keeps the set the scope from moving around. I'll tack this back here when I have a chance. But there it is. So now it's tacked in there in general with the correct size reference. I don't have any bleed through. Nope, no bleed through whatsoever. Very nice. Ooh, nice. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. You can see the little crack, the little shelf there. But it did not get any glue in here. Good. A little here. Let's let's just got that off there. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Ah. A little bit there, but this is why I didn't ungrease it just yet. A little there. Oh, there. Uh, there we go. Get that out of there. So that keeps that. I'm, I'm feeling the rim of the inside of this. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Holy shit. So now this thing is bound to here and here. It's not moving. It, it's stable. Yeah, see? Oh, man. This is great. Can you imagine if I made this out of, like, metal? Like, aluminum? Oh, that'd be great. But then I wouldn't get the tube surface. Okay, so, yeah, so I kept the grease in here on purpose. As you can see, this thing is so roughed up <laughs> that it doesn't, on the outside, that it just doesn't show really clearly. But, uh, oh man, this is great. This is, okay, this is going better than I expected it to go. Alright, so, crazy glue. Here's what I'm going to do. Take off my glasses because I'm a little nearsighted. And I'm gonna boom, 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 boom. Yep. Fill this top area here. Right in here. Now that that's sealed up to the back and the bottom. This is what I'm talking about. So now this is sealed in. I don't have to worry about this coming out because the shell actually holds this thing from going out. But what I need is this binding here between the ABS of the long shot part and this and it needs to be pretty much filled okay I could go back and use epoxy if I wanted to but for the time being I'm going to use this this is why I always have my doors open my windows open work I use a crazy amount of crazy glue a crazy amount of epoxy on just about anything and now I'm going to go in here going to make sure that's on the outside good okay um, make sure that the surface is clean. There's a champion blast we're talking about here, guys. I really, 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 really got to be careful. So the sacrifice of film quality to blaster quality, I'm sorry. Film quality will always fall second to this blaster. This thing, this thing is literally the blaster I said. This is the one everyone's going to remember me by. This design, the Bird of Prey, yeah, this is it. And it is such an important design. I believe for future development of blasters, not just my blasters, other people's. I'm starting to realize that ring is real tight. Huh, I should loosen it up a bit. Okay, so, hmm. So if I loosen the ring, I get less st st less uh, less static, or maybe do what Trip Miller suggested, use an X-ring. Huh, it's an idea. But wow, that is really tight. But it is smooth. It is butter smooth. You can see the ring engaged. It's back and then goes forward, back and then goes forward, yeah. Okay, let's see. I don't want to pull any glue through, so I just want to, yeah. Okay, so, concentrically filed it. I put, I put another layer of crazy glue on it just to fill in the voids. Any voids that came out of this up here. And now, I'm gonna, I let that dry. See how cool that looks, huh? Yeah. So this is bound chemically to this and here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a deck shelf up here and bind it with fiberglass. But before I do that, I'm going to take this layer here. Okay, and I got a, I got a sheet of 220 here, 220 sandpaper, good old um, diamond grit to to uh, 
Well, that didn't rip as well as I wanted it to. Oh well. Um, diamond grit 220. And I'm going to just even this out up here. Again, same concentric pattern. And what this does is it fills the places that are on the binding. It fills the holes. Because I had a few little bubbles that came up. It fills them up, but then it evens it out with the glue. So, yeah. So, the, uh, the Bird of Prey is highly uh, laminated blaster using fiberglass composites, uh, special glues, special techniques. You can't find in anything else. Um, this is also why they're not for sale. There's just so much to do to make one of these, but this is also why the world class are very specialized blasters. Now, Sandy, what it does is it makes it so I can see the low spots, like here. So that's one another reason why I put, I put glue on it. So when I sand it, I can better see the low spots. See? Like here and here. Because I want to make this as even as I can. So until the low spots are gone, they're going to show up. And when you want something that's perfectly just stable, yeah, that's right. And you can tell that a lot of that was caused by my filing. Okay, but what the sandpaper does, and I might, I might have been better off going up with 180, 220 will take me longer, but it will, was it, it will now even this up, so when I put the layer of fiberglass on this, it's going to be really cool. Yeah. I know, a lot of work, but this is what it takes. This is what it takes. Big blue is much the same. Same, same stuff, same kind of of, of piecework kind of work and I was always just kind of like I felt that that just wasn't solid enough on here and now it's going to be solid because this is going to be bound to this, bound to here, bound in there, bound back there. It's going to be bound on so many surfaces that's not going to break. On top of that it's going to be held in by a fiberglass reinforced shell. Now that I have the light on let me give you a little better look at this. Okay so you got, and if you look real carefully, if you look real carefully Okay, let me let me bring this in a bit. You can see how that's fiberglass. Fiberglass and fiber tape. Okay, but you can see how little of the white shell remains. Just a little tap. Just enough to interface with this top piece right here. And what this does is when I had the shell in here, I taped the back of it. That's the back of the tape. You can see the, the fiber tape right in here. You can see it. Mm-hmm. And I wrapped it around the shell. And then I, I laminated it around it all the way back here to here. And then I cut it. And that's why on this thing, on this tube, you actually see trim marks. See that? That knife? Trim marks. That's what that is. It's from this. What it did is it made it so this can hold the tube custom to the ABS. Now, to bond the ABS epoxy, you need to have a layer of crazy glue and fiberglass. Then uh, two layers of epoxy and seven and a half ounces of fiberglass. But as you can see, that is that is that is woven fiberglass, just like you can make woven carbon. But I, I don't want to use coal and carbon for this. Why? Because well, it's brittle. It's stiff. Okay. So at any rate, this film is going to be an epic saga. I can tell. It's going to have a lot of stuff that looks good, doesn't look good, what have you. But but I just can't believe how well this has held up over three years. And this blaster gets shot around a lot in my shop. Okay, a lot. And it is it is one of those, it is a winner. It is really a, a blaster that can hit long ranges, has gotten long range targets, has gotten consistent results in wars. It's very nice. So this is what it's like, and this has probably been cut down a major amount. When I model a blaster, it is not throwing a kit together and throwing it in there. Yes, there's components, certain standard ones, such as, okay, springs, what have you. But most of the stuff I work on is fabricated by hand. And that gives me a little edge because it makes it so I can control the specs and tolerances and also the, uh, the fit and the strength of the blaster. Um, now a lot of people say, well, just go metal, we'll just do this, this, that. And it's like, no, 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 no. There's an art in taking just a blaster. Okay, a shell, a okay, and making it something great, rather than resorting to someone else's kit or somebody else's mods or somebody else's everything. And I honestly believe 
that that's kind of becoming a lost art. Well, what do you do about it if you think something is becoming a lost art? You work on it, but that's also why you don't see me working on a million blasters. Because, well, let's put it this way. I've got a number of blasters, and it takes a long time. So this is fiber mesh cloth. Um, that, yeah, we call this, um, this is a fiber tape, um, fiberglass material. The stuff you usually use for, like, drywall. But it does really good with epoxy and, um, and, uh, crazy glue. Okay, so I am about to fumigate the room, so... Fan on. Very important. Okay, so... This is gonna be a little tough. Okay, so bear with me here. Uh, room, as always, not always the cleanest. That is life with Chris. That's what it's like. Okay, so you can see that right there. You can see it. There it is. So, let's zoom this in a bit. Oh, shoot. Maybe we count. And I've already, let's put it this way, I've already totaled a blaster today. <laughs> I really don't want to do any worse. <laughs> so I'm being real careful. I don't want to total a camera. But this thing is on aggressive tilt. If you can see this thing, oh boy. Okay. So I'm going to take this right here. And I'm just going to slam it with glue right there. Bam. 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 There it is. And what this is going to do is it's going to dry between the laminate of the uh, of the fiberglass. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll let that dry. I'm going to take the other side and I do it. So now what I'm doing is I'm making fiber reinforcements for this. Actually, I stab this right here. Huh? That gives me the distance I want, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Sure does. Okay. Gonna go a little deeper on the side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it literally takes fiberglass material and it makes a net that holds the stuff in place. Shoot, let's do that again. <laughs> that holds in place um, the composite parts that want to hold. This is why I, I believe in, in composites and fiberglass so much, is that there are a lot of, of load bearing nerf parts that, to be honest with you, if it had some fiberglass holding it together in the composite as a web, if I could find the end of this, holy shit, where'd I put it? Shoot. It can actually reinforce the part and keep it from... Shoot. It's hard to find this sometimes. It goes, you, oh, wait, 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 there it is. I think that's... Is that it? Is that it? Oh, there we go. Because this has like a sticky material that holds it together, okay? And uh, let's see. I want here, and I want here, and I want to bend this like this. All right. This is high-end composite designs. If you've ever seen like skis or boats or any or even exotic cars, that's right. What are they using? This kind of technology. And it's right. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, you know, McLarens. They're using composite technology. That's right. And though I learned in the fiberglass shop that mainly, mainly deals with uh, RV parts and amusement park, um, the amusement park stuff, and it usually sticks with, let's say, uh, normal fiberglass material and um, and polyester resin. Other stuff such as isomethyl cyanate resin, um, which is what this is. Um, you know, epoxy resins, which is what carbon graphite uses. Now, what I'm doing here, you know, we'll zoom this in a bit. Is I am making a net that's going to hold the front end of this together and then we'll make it uniform to the front of the blaster. Now, as you saw, I have some deep gouges and I sanded it away 
But that's not going to be a problem in a second, and I'll show you why. Because now I'll have this really neat looking fiberglass layer in the front of it. See? When I trim that, that's going to look boss. That's going to look boss. That's going to look absolutely boss. Oh, uh, yeah. So then this part gets trimmed up here. And what you end up with is it is a binder that's holding the tube and the uh, ABS for this. And since, since it is using Crazy Glue, it is a chemically compatible binder that is not only going to keep air from leaking from here ever again, but it's also going to hold the front of this together. It's going to hold this one piece. It's really bitchin'. It's really bitchin'. Have I done this successfully? You've seen me do it successfully. Bunch of times, guys. Now, here's the next part right here. Okay. So that all is going to be one net because my next laminate And I might just go crazy glue with this. I might not go epoxy. I have the rest of the blaster to hold it. That's how it's designed. I might just go crazy glue with this. After all, Chronomag, that's how the stays are done. They're done with the, this material and crazy glue. It, is, it really does help. Okay, so now, while this is somewhat wet, I'm going to put this layer in here. You know what? One more, one more. So yeah, this requires some custom cutting and custom fitting. And, and for God's sakes, if you're a kid, get some parents' help because this is... Well, they'll just say, kid, you're ridiculous. <laughs> you're, yeah, I'm like Cartea, I'm ridiculous. Yep, well, yeah, that is ridiculous. Ah, shoot. Okay. Now, not to bind my fingers in here. There it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically laid it on there. That's how I don't bind my fingers to the whole thing. Okay, so now I'm going to do one more side, the top. And what you're going to have is this matrix of cloth that, that acts as a laminate. This is how carbon fiber works. This is how fiberglass works. This is how a lot of stuff that you see in consumer products. This is how it works. Yeah. Yeah, you can make car bodies from this. You can make boats. You can make jets. Oh, yeah. A very advanced skill. Very advanced stuff. This is a double layer, but I don't mind. Um, or if I can separate them, that would be even better. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. There we are. This stuff is really good to work with for this kind of stuff. Just a simple reinforcement with ABS and uh, and Lexan, you know, polycarbonate. And this does bond the polycarbonate and nylon and everything else. So this also works for, let's say, uh, reinforcing fiberglass shells. Okay, uh, well, reinforcing like blaster shells. You know, it's an idea. So the guys are trying to get to 500 FPS uh, with their with the U calibers. They may want to think about, hey, you know what? Maybe we should do some composite work like Chris does. Yeah. Okay, so now this is all laid down in here. It's tacked off by the last layer. And I'm going to... Yeah. So when you're using fiberglass, you use huge amounts of cloth with squeegees and rollers onto a surface that usually has a, a layer of paint that they call gel coat. And put in mind that it's not a process that dries, it's a process that what's called kicked off. And kicked off means chemically bonded together. This is what's called a catalyst. This is an air glue. glue. And it's plenty strong for what I want to do. So, I just decided, you yeah, know, maybe this is just good enough. And it might not be. And if it's not, this is a perfect surface now where I can put a layer of fiberglass, uh, epoxy and, and resin, and epoxy resin and fiberglass, or even better, CF. I can put C well, I don't know if CF is better. This is why I don't use a lot of CF. Because I believe that for this weight of the size of the part, the weight you're gonna save isn't really a big deal. Plus who's bragging about having light blasters other than me? <laughs> and that's not done by material, that's done by um, by size. In fact, I'm using pistols. Okay, so there we are. There it is. Okay. So now I'm going to let this cure a little bit and come back to this. And then I'm going to trim it. I'm going to take a little bit of glue off here. 
and then when it's cured, maybe put another layer of glue or leave it empty. I don't know yet. We'll find out. Okay, so the trick here is you want to wait till this is tacky, okay? Not dry, not wet. Tacky. Next thing is you can blow on it. But look how that is going to work, guys. Look how that is going to work. Yeah, see? Yeah. So when I'm done with this, put another layer of glue on it. Just glue it. And it will make a really good composite. Now, put in mind, mechanical engineer, bringing in university. <laughs> Let's just say I'm an engineer. Um, I've designed stuff. I know what I'm doing. So I honestly say, unless you know what you're doing, do not try this stuff at home because I kind of know what I'm doing. But it is an idea for reinforcing certain parts of your blaster. Um, OC Nerf uses a lot of fiberglass that he learned from me, and I, I really appreciate that. And then so does Boomtendo and a few other people with the skill. So I'm going to just use a scissor. I'm not even use a knife blade. I'm just going to scissor it. Give you the general idea. Yeah. Now, now I'll take my knife blade, and I'm going to I'm going to take all my glasses because I'm a little nearsighted. Yeah, without them, and uh, or far sighted without them. So I'm going to trim this real freaking carefully. Hmm. You want to go off with the scissors, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Now when you use scissors, put in mind you're compressing it, you're squeezing out what you would call your resin out of it, and afterwards you will probably want to hit it with another layer of glue. And when you also use resin, your uh, scissors, you don't want them closed, because if they're closed they'll stick, you have this crazy glue. And I have He-Man hands that can pull them apart, and you may not be able to pull them apart, but oh man, oh this is really working out, look at this. So now I have these open cell corners all around, crazy glue, take my knife and clean the inside edges of these scissors, because I do not want these scissors to become useless, and yes, they can easily become useless. Okay. So now I have all these open cell corners here. Wow, look at this shit. This is cool, huh? So now it's bound in the front, and it's bound inside of it. This is, when this dries completely, is it cures completely, and it's gonna take a few days to cure completely. It is not gonna come loose, man. It's not gonna come loose. Now I think I can hit this a little better with my knife using the edge. Okay, put in mind, project quality is much more important to me than video quality, sorry guys, but it is a sacrifice I made to be the top pistol guy, <laughs> the top pistol sniper in the world, or well, one of them, you know, that's a, dude, that's a pretty, not a dubious clip, but let's just say that's a pretty bold statement, I understand, but, you know, you got Brad Phillips, you got me, you got Alan, you got a few other guys, that really go the distance and shoot the precise shots and uh, you got people in, in Singapore, they got Junkie, you got Conrad, you got all sorts of cool people, Conrad's son who's working on Sabre, lots of stuff, so look at that, see that? Oh yeah, so now I'm going to hit the edges because the edges are open. And also, I don't want moisture to get in my edges, but also, this is going to bind the very edge of my tube. Oh, holy cow. So now those open cores of fiberglass are being soaked in with isomethosilicate resin. And what that does is really cool. So I just wanted to go around once, take my finger, without binding it, very lightly touching it, yeah, and I know this bike and my fingers all full of, all full of crazy glue. And now, 
Look at that. Look at that composite job, man. Ooh, man. Yeah, that is really strong. I, it's a very paper thin layer of fiberglass and isomethylsilicate. Now, if I wanted to make this thicker, I could. I could make it a few layers thicker to give it more substrate. But what I really want to do is I wanted a not just an inside here where the pressure is hitting it from the back of the silicone, but I also wanted this lip here that would, that would kind of tee it close for the pressure. That's the real reason I did this. And also it gives it a little bit, it would, obviously that's gonna look real snazzy in my blast. That's gonna look really cool. Yeah, that was the other reason. But, you know, real composite work shouldn't be because of looks. It should be for weight reduction, flex reduction, um, and, and definitely performance reasons. And this is, this is, this is, this is, this tube is never gonna leak at the, uh, at the uh, at the coupler again look at this thing look at this thing so here's the thing i was in this very room firing into this empty ball of hennessy uh, some darts to um to uh wax my barrels and he was sitting right here like on the on the shelf and i went poof and he fell fell right on there and right when it happened my first reaction was nah shit am i gonna be able to get that part my next reaction was, well, of course I'm going to get the part from Chris Cartea. Um, not to be arrogant or anything, but dude, I put, I've taken apart even worse stuff than this. And then my next reaction was, I can make it better. Wow. So, yeah, so this is just the tube and everything else. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let this even out. Can, I can see the uh, material kind of sucking up the, uh, the resin. I'm going to leave this here overnight. Let this dry. Also, why when I did commissions, why it takes so damn long for me to do a commission? Oh yes, ordering something. This is why I don't I don't accept commissions anymore. Ordering something for me is like ordering something from Ferrari. Okay, it's it takes forever and it's all custom and it's really tough. And this is why I just don't do it anymore. Not only is it not profitable, it is very troublesome. And also, these blasters are made to hand not only to hand make but to hand maintain and a lot of people just don't know how to do that because they're used to getting stuff in kits and it's not the other advantage of kits is that you don't have to do all this upkeep but the upkeep man i mean cheetah i can you can do 180 feet per second with a cheetah you can do 300 plus feet per second with a bird what would you pick <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You need 250 with a takedown and a 3D printed parts kit that you have to leave out of the sun or the 3D printing might bend your warp or melt. Well, that's nice. What about a hand built composite thing that it doesn't matter if you know the Sahara Desert and it's 130 degrees outside. It's not going to melt. It's not going to deform. It's not going to warp. Um, a lot of the Explorer stuff is like that too, where it's made for the extreme environments in Singapore, for example. This is why Ninja Hang was such a great, 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 great influence on me. And this is why you will hardly ever see me fabricate something with 3D print. Call it outdated? Well, until the numbers go down, I hate to call it, not call it outdated, I call it state of the art. So until next time, whoa, you want that covered with, <laughs> with crazy glue. Kind of makes it louder. Yeah, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing or I'll find you. <laughs>